This is a review and analysis of sound used in Spirit, the 2002 animated film. Warning, this video does contain spoilers. So, first off, let's overview what the plot of Spirit was. So, Spirit follows the story of a wild stallion in the Wild West. The humans come onto his herd's land and capture him. When they try to break him, it proves that he is much stronger than they expected. And when a Native American man, Little Creek, is captured, the two become an unlikely pair and escape. Being brought to the Native American village, Spirit meets Rain, a mare who is very close with Little Creek. After trying to break Spirit, Little Creek realizes that he will never be broken and lets him go. However, the colonizers attack the village and Rain gets shot. Spirit is recaptured and the movie's climax comes when Spirit escapes yet again, preventing the train that he was forced to pull from reaching his homeland. He finds Little Creek and they escape by jumping over a canyon. When they arrive back at Little Creek's village, Rain is okay, and in the end, Rain and Spirit go home together. So that is the overview of the plot, and now let's dive into Sound in Spirit. Uh, so as it is a movie that follows the story of a horse, there is very little diegetic sound other than um, some very limited dialogue, some sound effects for realism, and uh, a few horse noises used for um, emotion. So the lines in the dialogue that is used is very significant to the plot, and it tells a lot of the themes of the story. For example, uh, one of the main significant pieces of dialogue is from Little Creek, one of the few main character humans, and it's to Spirit, I'm never going to ride you, and then later, Spirit who could not be broken. And it's really to d discuss how Spirit was this wild horse and he could never be broken, and he, was, and he was part of the land, and that the humans really didn't deserve and could never ride him because of his character and because of his importance. And then another very significant and very lengthy piece of dialogue that is used is the Colonel's monologue, and it talks a lot about the plot that eventually will come back into surface, and it also talks about a few themes and also sets up more of the antagonist's point of view in the film. Also, there's a few small pieces of dialogue you can hear throughout the film that are used a lot to convey some dramatic irony since Spirit doesn't know these things, but we hear them and we understand what's happening from a human's perspective that he does not understand yet. And also, um, there's a few lines that just signify uh, direct characterization. Moving forward, non-diegetic sound in the film is incredibly valuable. The non-diegetic sound used is music and also Spirit's internal monologue slash the narration of the film. They're very significant because they convey a lot of emotion of the film and also a lot of perspective and the brunt of the story is told through these moments of n narration or these very significant musical um, parts of the film. So a lot of the music is used to convey like the emotion and the themes of each scene. So there's several songs in the film that are used and they're all very incredible songs and there are specific moments where um, the song lines up with what's happening in a very specific and intentional way. One of the most important is after the climax when they jump over the canyon there's a very quiet moment where the colonel nods and spirit nods and they begin to go their separate ways and the song suddenly bursts forward with I'm free and it lines up with Spirit and Little Creek celebrating their freedom which is very significant. There are also other places where this, this is also found. For example in the low point of the film when Spirit is at his most oppressed and he's completely given up and then he sees again what is worth fighting for and he begins to fight again. And um, also, 
there's a moment before that even when the people are trying to break him uh there's also a song that plays and um the main chorus is get off of my back and into my game it's basically spirit saying he can't be broken you can't ride him and you better play his game and give up which i think is a very fantastic use of music that we don't see in a lot of films but i think because this movie was about a horse and therefore there can't be a lot of dialogue conveying the emotion and the feelings then the music was chosen very intentionally and designed specifically to bring out those themes and those emotions over and over again. Moving forward, the internal monologue slash narration of the story told from Spirit's perspective is very significant as it's one of the um, main sources of speaking in the film. And a lot of the sp- a lot of the moments where it's used is to describe what was happening from Spirit's perspective, and also from what the others were feeling and saying. And then also there are a lot of moments where the narration comes back because Spirit realizes something. And obviously, as a horse, if there was no narration of these moments, we would not know what was going on. And the narration was very intentional in that it allowed us to keep following and keep feeling what he's feeling and keep understanding what's going on and also keep up with all of those moments of realization. So I think sound was used incredibly well in this film because there's just so many moments of incredible intention and you can imagine how much thought and timing went into the, every part of it with the work of the composer and the animators and the director all going together to try to figure out when these moments can come forward where the sound is the most important and we hear it and we catch on and it keeps the story moving forward and it they just did it very beautifully and there are so many examples of it in the film. I think this film is really amazing. I give it five stars. I really don't have a lot of complaints about it. It is an older film, but the animation style and the plot holds up over time. And so all ages and all um, people can watch it, hopefully far into the future, because it is just a genuinely emotional and heartfelt and very enjoyable film with lots of action-packed sequences, which you don't expect from a horse movie. But it was just really great. Also, I find that the animation style is just really satisfying to watch because it's 2D animation, but it's on these beautiful painted backgrounds and these super detailed things. And there's just so much beauty in it. And also there's a lot of really funny moments and really heartfelt moments. So it's just generally very enjoyable to watch and very interesting. So, five stars. I definitely recommend you give it a watch at least once, and thank you for watching.